It's time for another tale from the glass-guarded world. Ashley plays Terra Dane, the human fighter. Josh is Zartok, the tiefling wizard, and Gaston, the rogue and bard. Jessica is Coral Pedricor, the Genasi druid, and Mama Sass, the half-orc bard and barbarian. And Chris plays Aster Fortuna, the rogue and bard extraordinaire. <sighs> so, I was charmed. Of course I was charmed! Do you think someone as wise and experienced as Aster Fortuna could act like such a fool? Hmm. Yes, last time we discovered that Ayeth was some kind of soul-sucking enchantress, and we somehow managed to accidentally foil her plans for the Sorcerer Queen. whoop dee doo She attacked me, but my loyal friends came to my rescue forcing the temptress to flee. So something good came out of it. After some discussion, we decided to visit the gods who live atop the highest mountain in the world. It looks like I'll get to visit Seafoam Wanderer, though, the goddess of love. Now we rejoin our heroes as their spelljammer, Corellan's Needle, soars eastward. party has just left Durfolk after ruining the plans of the person that they knew as Ayeth and angering the Sorcerer Queen, though they probably unintentionally helped her. And they randomly fled northeast. And you've rolled one random encounter check, but you haven't left the atmosphere, so you're moving very slowly. Uh, just to remind you, you travel faster, much faster, at spell jamming speeds outside of the atmosphere. So normally, if you want to get somewhere quickly, you exit the atmosphere, travel at high speed, then re-enter the atmosphere. Uh, taking the fastest route to the God's Peak will require exiting the atmosphere, flying east, and then descending. This means three more random encounter checks. Uh, you may have things to talk about. You've already talked about how Aster should have told you earlier about the invitation to speak to the gods. You also sent some magical messages to the Sorcerer Queen apologizing, though she did not sound interested in reconciliation. Excuse me, in reconciliation. The ship is now flying southeast toward Izamun Azanar, the mountainous land of the dwarves. The God's Peak, home of most of the gods, is located within that mountain range. You're still several days travel away if you continue flying through the atmosphere. Do you want to exit the atmosphere and get up to spell jamming speeds to reduce the travel time, or do you want to continue at this speed? Fast mode. Fast. Fast mode. Agreed. Fast travel. Okay. <clears throat> like in Mass Effect. You have not unlocked fast travel yet. <laughs> <laughs> but faster travel is available. So somebody roll me a D6. Well, while we're doing this, can I ask a question? When we had that conversation about the God Peak, and then when I sent those messages, was that nighttime and now we're on a new day? Or uh, No, it was uh, very, well, it was sort of in the middle of the night when you fled. It was like three in the morning when you fled the city. Mm-hmm. And then you continued flying through the morning. You got up in the morning and talked some more. Mm. And, and so it is, now, it is now early morning. Well, You've all had a long rest. Well, we fled. Then we went to sleep. And the next day I talked to my betrayer, Ayeth. No, you didn't. You talked to the uh, sorceress. We no, no, talked no, to the sorceress. No, no, no. We, the... we slept part of the night. <clears throat> Ayeth showed up. And then right. we fled the city. Yes. I, we fought Ayeth, and then we slept some more. I thought right. we went to sleep, and then in the morning we no. talked to Ayeth. It all no. happened in that one night? It was yep. like 3 a.m. that gotcha. she showed up. Okay, yep. so then the day after, we talked, and I cast Ascending Spells. Good to know. Yes. I'm just trying to keep track of that because I use spells. By the day after, I mean, like at 3 o'clock in the morning, you fled and fought Ayeth and, and then went, went to bed mm -hmm. eventually, and then you got up that same day, you know, at, at, I don't know, eight or nine or 10 in the morning and had your conversation and Message Aster grumpily flew around on his Pegasus. Yep. That did happen. Is it not a spell you can cast as ritual? 
Sending? No, no, sending is a casting spell. Oh. But no, I just wanted to know to keep track so that I make sure that those stay marked as used. Right. right. Well, you right. have had a long rest. I guess you have expended those sending spells. Yeah, though. I did. I didn't. just wanted to know. Okay. All right, who's rolling? Who's rolling? Should we just go in order from um, we my... We can go in order from your screen. From my screen? Uh-huh. Okay, so that would mean Jessica, roll a 1d6. Four. Four. Okay, so that morning, as you uh, head up out of the atmosphere, you don't have any random encounters. You Your ship rises high above the ocean, up through the atmosphere, and now you can see the curvature of the planet and the sky, the, the stars up above... Is there anything anybody's talking about? Is there anything we need to do or plan during this uh, morning travel? I'm going to find Zartok, unless anybody else. All right. I assume Zartok is probably flying the ship here in the morning. Yeah. I don't know. Let's roll for it randomly. (laughs) Uh, uh, Odds is not evens. Yes. It's evens. He's flying. All right. Yeah. Can he talk while flying? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Yeah, okay. Although, Zartok, you could pretend, if you don't want to talk to Aster, you could pretend That's true. that it takes your total <laughs> concentration we'll and you're very busy. Asks. We'll see what he asks first. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, Zartok. I go, I go up to Zartok, and I lean on the area towards the, like, like if you flip over, you'd fall off the ship, but I'm just leaning. I don't know how the dimensions of the spell jammer are, but I lean on something, and I look at at Zartok. Is Zartok sitting in the spell jamming helm? Yeah. Okay. So he could go anywhere, but he's choosing to sit in the helm. So you're actually in the bridge. Oh. There's nothing to there's nothing to risk falling out of. Okay. So I'll just lean against the chair that he's sitting in. Okay. Like with my back and I'll just be like, so <clears throat> hey Zartok. How are you, my friend? Mm-hmm. Pretty good. Good, good uh good ship flying through the skies. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, I just wanted to say thank you for listening to me when I was swooning over uh, the person that shall not be named because she almost killed me. Um, I just wanted to thank you. I, I was charmed, so I might have been talking a little bit too much and too excitedly about that individual, and I apologize if I sounded like a maniac when we were talking. I've got to be honest, I don't remember what I said at all, but you're welcome. Oh, Zartok, never change. Regardless, um, I do appreciate that you even (laughs) deemed it enough to lend an ear in the moment. Um, that's really affected me quite a bit, I don't know. Uh, it hurts, even though I know it was a trick. She was just so good at making me feel like I was needed. Oh, boy, you f- do you feel the, the, this patch of turbulence? Oh, boy, oh, gee, oh, Zartok's shaking the ship up and down. Oh, you, you <laughs> want, just, oh, this is, oh, watch out, we'll just be careful. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'll rough. try to keep my balance inside, Jack. Mm. <laughs> 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 That's <just> funny. <laughs> Do I know? Do I know that he's just trying to joggle? I don't know. The, I don't know. Uh, like, do if you want to seriously try chair? to deceive him? You could. You could roll deception. I uh, he, he got it. I got a nine. <laughs> 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 yeah, I guess Aster se- senses that he's making Zartok uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah. Or I just feel him, you know, shaking yeah. the chair a little. <laughs> um. So I lean back up from the chair and I go. Oh, um, well, I know these are sensitive topics and you're a very quiet, reserved individual. Um, I just know that out of everybody here, I think you have the most experience when it comes to this. But, uh, you know, I don't want to take away your time. I know that you're flying through the skies and you need your focus on, you know, the task. Anyway, I'm sure you're busy. I'm going to go now. <laughs> good boy. All, right. All right, yeah. I mean, just remember, my experience of this is not good. So, you know, you might want to seek out a better mentor in this area. There's nobody. <laughs> <laughs> that 
I don't. I mean, I could ask Tara. Oh. I don't know what her love life is like. Maybe Mama Sass or Papa Gaston might have some information. Anyway, goodbye, oh, Zartok. Talk. I don't. I don't think so. Okay, yep. Talk to you later. See you, buddy. I walk away. I miss Paxton. <laughs> <laughs> I keep walking. I'm done. Anybody else need to talk about anything? Coral is at the mirror. All right. So Coral walks up to the mirror. And the mirror says. Well, hello. Look at you. <laughs> the same as yesterday and the day before that. I mean, I don't, I don't have, I don't, I don't have a lot of things to change into up here. Do you have any suggestions to make me, I don't know, look better, more presentable? I suppose. Oh, she kind of messes dear. with her hair, tries to get it to lay flat. It doesn't, so she spikes it up again. Oh dear. Let's see. Well. Uh, you have a whole fishy theme going on here. <laughs> so I think your options are to either, either be less fishy or perhaps pursue people who are really into fish. <laughs> what? <laughs> is her hair insane stuff? I mean, I, well, I like my armor. It's good for a lot of things. Uh, so I don't want to get rid of that. Um, oh. and, uh, and you could cover it up. Have you thought about a gown or a robe or a cloak? I, I could probably, I don't know that there's any cloaks on the ship. I, I, I just, I, I got the clothes I'm wearing, so I don't, I don't, like, maybe if so I... So what you're asking is for you, something you could do that doesn't involve changing your hair or your clothes. Well, I just can't change my clothes too much because we're on a ship. This is a ship. We're in the air. There's nothing. nothing uh-huh. There's no oh, yes. shops around us, so <laughs> yes. I can't really go buy some clothes. I would if you thought that would help, but I I can't. And we're headed where we're going. I need to be presentable when I get there. Hmm. Presentable. Well, um, makeup is, I suppose, not really something you've had a lot of practice with. Uh. And I don't know that that's the thing. You really need something dramatic to make yourself... You know who you should talk to. Who should I talk to? You, you should talk to the captain of the ship. Uh, she is put together. You can tell she's in charge. She might even have some kind of clothing she could loan you. Perhaps a tunic or um, some kind of dress or I'm not perhaps big a on uniform, dresses. A, a, a uniform of some kind, or uh, I don't know. Um, I, I think for you, something. I, I, the red hair is simply not going away; it can't be hidden. So I think you do need to do something to emphasize that. Something like, like, like more a, red. Like I should wear more, more red. red. Yes, yes, more red. Okay. Exactly. Okay. Uh, talk tear and more red. Okay, I can. I, I think can, that. Yes. Okay. Thanks so much, Mirror. I appreciate your help. Anytime. Oh, it'll never work. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> Evil Mirror. Coral wanders off to see if she can make any plants using, um, oh, golly. Uh, druidcraft. Using, nope. Why can't? Druidcraft. Yes, thank you. Using Druidcraft You're welcome. Uh, to dye her clothes. I, we don't have to role play that, but she's going to go do that for a minute. Oh, you're going to get a comment from Master. I can't wait. Okay, so you're going to get some, grow some plants to try to dye your clothes. I'm going to see if I can grow some like berries or something. We don't I have don't to see role why play you, it. I don't want it to succeed. <laughs> I don't see why you couldn't do that. I mean, we have a limited time here as well before we get there. So that's so, a roll for how good it looks. <laughs> <laughs> Roll a performance just, check. Just like splotchy red on her. <laughs> it looks even worse. You know? So it says you instantly make a flower <laughs> blossom, a seed pot open, or a leaf bud bloom. But you can make dyes from, from plants. Yeah, you could make a, a, you could use that to create a dye. I don't know how well you could use it to stain your clothing, but uh, I mean, if you wanted to spend the rest of the day doing this, I'll let you make a nature check or an arcana check to see how well you can make a dye to stain your clothing. I, d- I didn't want this to succeed. I don't want oh, red no. clothing. It's bad. Okay. Um, yeah, it's going to look so clashed. It's going to look here. terrible. Um, <laughs> Just be know, pink. <laughs> you know, she's following the advice of Mirror and didn't talk to Tara first, so this is what happens. 
Uh, well, if it takes the whole day, though, I don't think she would. She would go find Tara before, like, the day is out. Investing a day, sure, sure. Okay. Well, uh, let's roll another random encounter check for the middle of the day. So that's going to be Josh this time. Roll a one d six. Six. All right, nothing happens. Oh, I couldn't remember if it was one or six. Sorry. Our trend continues. I got excited. <laughs> yes. If Coral wants to talk to Tara, now is a good time. Uh, yeah, Coral goes looking for Tara. She's got a, a bowl that she made out of branches, because Druidcraft, and it's filled with berries of some sort, and she goes looking for Tara. Okay. What's Tara spending her day doing? Uh, I guess Tara's probably, at this point, just uh, on the deck, okay. looking out of the land that she's seen many times before. You can see from high up here in space, which is where you're traveling during the middle of the day at high speed, you can see the land quickly sliding by beneath, and you can see the stars up above. Uh, maybe in the very far distance you can see the moonstone. Um, yeah, it's a beautiful view, and Coral comes up to you with a bowl made of branches filled with berries. <laughs> oh, hey, Coral. You got, like, a snack? I mean, um, I... <laughs> Are these berries poisonous? I have no idea. You tell me. <laughs> You're the druid. <laughs> I get to make this up? Okay. Uh, no, these are not. No, these are not slacking berries. Uh, it would not be good for you to eat these. Oh. Uh, but I had a, I had a question. I was talking to Mirror. Uh, I want to be like presentable when we get to the God's Peak. And uh, Mira suggested I talk to you and that I dye my clothes red. So I got these berries, but I don't know if I have enough time to actually dye my clothes uh, and or get them red enough to match my hair. Because, you know, Mira said I should emphasize my red hair. What do you think? Oh, I, hmm. I am a little worried about uh, the dye and how quickly that can, like, dry, you know, Oh. It might just smell like berries. I'm not. Tara like kind of leans forward and like tries to take a whiff of the berries and see if she can get a smell from them. And maybe they smell good, but I, I don't know. How do they smell? I'm gonna say they smell like pine resin. Uh, mm. So that that might be a little overwhelming. Oh, that's um, a good point. What? Where'd you get these berries? Oh, I made them. You know, oh. with magic. Um. Well, you know, I'm a big fan of braids. You see, like my little. Like you could make you like a braid crown. Uh, you could put some flowers in it. Oh, like not um, out of not out of my hair, which is way too short for that. But like use use other flowers. Oh, that's a cool idea. I like that. Well, I mean, you can can't you if you if you braid it really close to the head, maybe you could have a, like a French braid. Is it way too short for a French oh, it's braid? I don't way know. too short okay. for that. <laughs> um, we're we're talking <sighs> inch, two inches, maybe. It's okay. real short. Yeah, also, I've, I feel like I've seen it burst into flame. It does so do that, that occasionally, yeah. That might be bad for flowers. That's true. Um, oh, what if what if you just make a wreath with flowers? With, you know, like, and you just have a little crown you put on your head. I I think crowns are really nice. I mean, I like your <laughs> crown a lot. It's real fancy. Uh, so I could do something similar. I could do, yeah. You think, what, what? well, should I put flowers in it? Should I just do, like branches and stuff. Tara's tiara says, as long as no one gets confused about who's the leader, <laughs> it's know, fine for her to wear a crown. I think it's completely up to you. Like, if you like flowers, put flowers in it. If you just want branches because you'll look like a nature goddess, then you should do that. But, um, you know, just I think whatever you do, they'll notice that you made an effort and I think that will be respected. And uh, I mean, I, I have like some fine clothes, although I think they might be a little overwarm. Like, may, you know, I don't know. You want to borrow some pants? I mean, you know. I, I, I feel like your pants are probably going to be uh, big on me. Like you're you're tall and, you know, real muscular. I'm not. Yeah. Yeah. You might you might cuff them up. But they still might be a little baggy. Uh yeah, well, you know, I just think you, you got to work with what you got. It's not like we're really stopping anywhere except for going there. So just, you know, uh, I have a brush. Would you like that? I mean, sure. I can run that through my hair. I haven't brushed it in a while. 
Yes, that's perfect. Let's get a brush and uh, I'll see if there's any oils that I can get in your hair and uh, we'll, we'll work with what we got. Let's go. Well, well, that's great. Thanks, Tara. Question. Can things be thrown off of the ship while we're in atmosphere? Well, you, while you're in the atmosphere? Well, no, sorry. While we're out of the atmosphere. Uh, y- you want to try it and see what happens? Uh <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going to take the yep. basket, and I'm okay. just going to kind of frisbee it uh, out off the ship as we okay. head inside. So you throw it off the side of the ship. You're not going to watch to see what happens. No. You just casually throw it just over. Casually okay. throw it. All right. Okay. Great. It does not <laughs> bounce off of something. And... No. Okay, no, cool. You don't, cool. But, okay. but you don't follow it to see what happens, so nope. you don't see what, nope. what happens to it. Okay. Okay. All right. And it's the first space trash of Jebber Orb. <laughs> <laughs> it's <The> biodegradable. <laughs> it's probably fine. <laughs> what bio you know, is it going to degrade? It's a good question. <laughs> awesome. So you're you're really excited to talk to these uh, these gods, huh? Oh yeah, I got big. I, I got some big questions I need to talk to him about. We'll see if anything happens. Uh, because Zartok was super unhelpful, and I'm hoping maybe they'll be better. But we'll see. I just I well, just want to make a good first impression. Is there any anyone in particular that you're trying to talk to, or do you think that that might actually know something about this stuff? Because you know I'm not from here, so I don't really know all of them. And really, the only one I know anything about, other than you know Asher's lady is uh is the healer and you know uh well foresight who's obviously not going to be there oh, i'm hoping to talk to the great archer oh oh well he or she sounds cool oh yeah she's i mean, she's great she likes nature and wilderness and animals and stuff so i feel like she's probably my best hope well maybe someone with you know nature might know about the heating or have a good idea i mean yeah i could ask about that that's not why I wanted to talk to her, but I could ask about that. Oh, oh, what uh, what are you trying to talk to them about? Oh, well, the far off one did something funky to my, my mind, and so I'm not sure if I'm <laughs> safe to be around you guys or not, and I'm real concerned about it, and so I need to talk to somebody, and I figured a god could probably help me because Zartok was not helpful. What, what did she do to your mind? I don't really know. It may have been a dream. Um, so we were at her, at her place and, uh, I woke up in the middle of the night and I went and looked in the cabin and her and her sisters were there and they had like a thread and they cut it and it hurt, but kind of felt like they were releasing me from something. And so I don't really know what it was and I'm concerned about it. I can understand why you maybe don't trust her so much then. That's, (laughs) oh yeah. That is, uh. That that would scare me too, but so when when you woke up, did it did it still hurt or? That's an excellent question that I do not remember, Mike. Nope, you felt fine. I don't remember. I don't think so. It's been oh, a while. Thank you. You were fine. Okay. No, it was it was all right when I woke up. Uh, it was I it felt kind of like a dream. So I thought maybe for a while it was a dream, but you're not sure. I, I'm not sure. So maybe it's fine, and uh, maybe the great archer can tell me that. So hopefully it's all great. Yeah, yeah, okay. Well, that that makes some sense. Like, I mean, I know, I know you never liked her in the first place, but so maybe that's why you had a bad dream about her. But yeah, I mean, well, that's I, weird. She, she she really real really made me nervous. Just all about <laughs> her, uh, and and Zartok kind of makes me nervous now, especially after he was super unhelpful when I talked to him about her. I was nervous about talking to him about her because he's like a follower now. And I wasn't sure how that would go, and it did not go well. So no. I'm a little nervous about him at this point, but it's probably fine. Probably fine. I, I you know, I get being nervous about her. She, but uh, Zartok, he's a he's a friend. Um, I don't think he'd do anything to hurt you, Coral. I don't know that he'd do anything intentional, but like, I don't know what she's up to, and I don't know. We'll see. It'll be all right. I I I, yeah. I feel like there's we're heading in a direction. I got maybe some answers coming up, so I'm 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 hopeful. Well, we're most certainly heading in a direction. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we are. Dang, <laughs> can't argue with that. <laughs> That's like a passive aggressive leadership quote. <laughs> <laughs> We're going in a direction. <laughs> I don't know if we'll get any answers. I mean, that is, who no, knows? That's, that's fair. That's, that was a lot, so. <laughs> but we are definitely going somewhere, and we're going to try. 
All right, Chris, <laughs> give me another 1d6 roll for the travel through the night. Okay, can I be doing something real quick at night? Sure. <laughs> I'm going to have brought um, Syl, Sylphonia, up until the bridge where she can see, wherever she can see the sky. Like the, well, the, the you stars. You can just have her on the deck. She won't fit in the bridge. Okay, I have her on the deck. Um, and I'm going to have her like, like sitting down, like in a, with her legs curled in and, and I'm going to be le- like laying down on the floor and putting my, resting my head on her. Okay. And I'm going to be looking up at the stars and I'm going to ask, uh, Sylphonia, Hey, Syl, uh, it's beautiful up here, isn't it? Have you ever seen anything like this? I've, I've seen lots of magical things, Asta, but I'm not sure that this one is, matches up to any of them, especially now that I'm here with you. Ah, that's sweet, Syl. It is very beautiful. You could never see something like this, or I'm from, from a jar. But, you know, uh, no one's giving me any good advice. Papa Gaston seems, you know, pretty busy with his own thing. Mama Sass is like cleaning her weapon, the giant turret. I'm sure you've noticed it. I don't want to bother anybody. And I just need to vent. I'm always here for you, Asta. Tell me anything. I am here for you. You know, I was, again, charmed by this person. So most of it was... Uh, a lie. I wasn't really infatuated with her. However, when I came out of it and, you know, she tried to kill me, uh, it hurt. Maybe not because she was this perfect person that I was led to believe, but more because I had put so much trust in an individual and got betrayed so hard. And, uh, I don't know how to deal with that because I kind of want to I have this feeling bubbling inside of wanting to do something about it. I want to find her, and I just want her to play patty cake with the ground under my suggestion spell. But, uh, you know, I don't know if those emotions are coming from the right place. I don't necessarily want to kill anyone, but I'm very angry and upset. I mean, matters of the heart are always complicated. And she has done the worst thing she could. She has betrayed you, my sweet Asta. And it's understandable that you want some kind of revenge. But here's what you need to ask yourself, dear. Will that revenge give you peace? That's true. I just want to talk to these gods, get the answers we need, and move on from this thing. And just finish everything. I feel like we've done so much adventuring, yet we've missed the mark sometimes. I feel like we messed up with the queen. Um, partly my fault, though I think we saved, you know, their lives by not letting the plan go ahead. Either way, Levarian is still going to come. He's a giant silver dragon that wants to kill everybody or enslave people. Um, but yeah, I just, I'm trying to figure things out, but I appreciate your advice, Syl. I'm always here for you, my dear. Always and forever. Thank you. Until I get unsummoned and am no longer actually here. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. That's true. I'd have to waste a spell to summon you back. <laughs> uh, um, do you, uh, you have my back, right, Syl? In battle? Always. Thanks. Let's continue looking at the sky. <laughs> and uh, I just need some rest. But uh, thank you. Sylph will kind of take one of her wings and fold it around you, blanket-like. That's adorable. I love that. <laughs> okay, yeah. Okay, roll a 1d6, Chris. I want to listen to a self-help podcast with Jessica's southern <laughs> voice. Yeah, it sounds awesome. You can do anything you put your mind to. And I'll be like, I'll just go, oh, yeah. I rolled it. <laughs> I want to show you roll. guys with my camera. I rolled right. a one. Yeah, oh, prove it. Oh, no. It finally happened. Right. Can I prove it? Hold on. I don't want to touch yeah, the prove table. It. No, no. Don't prove it if it's going to break things. <laughs> yeah, don't mess it. Oh, oh dear. <laughs> it's too late. Uh, oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no, he broke yep. it. Yep. I broke, so. You broke your camera, uh, Chris. I'm going to say the cord came unplugged. <laughs> yep. You no, unplugged it. It, 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 it. 
I'm sorry. I don't know yeah. actually what happened. We believe you. Yeah, you, sh- <laughs> I you must know, have bumped it, something. It's been so exciting so long before we got a we one. We waited <laughs> so long. I don't know, this is dangerous. <laughs> I'm sorry I encouraged it. Everyone else was like, no, no, no. <laughs> Yo, Yo, you'll so break great. something, and you know what? We can't see Chris anymore. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna oh, get out some Chris. other dice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was the random encounter. <laughs> Aster falls off the ship <laughs> <laughs> again. Sylvia yeah. gets tired of listening to him and flicks him off <laughs> with her wig. Push push <laughs> there oh, we he's go. Back. It reminded okay. me of, uh, of of Hercules. Oh yeah. Oh. All right, so I have to roll here. I'm going to go ahead and roll, what am I rolling? A d20. I'm rolling a d20 to see what happens from this big table here. I knew natural ones would save me one day. We wanted this to happen, right? I mean, mm-hmm. I'm not, I'm always a fan of XP, so I'm not upset. I'm so far from a level, whatever. I mean, I, I am, am too, not. but. <laughs> I am not, I'm almost there. All yeah. right, so you're flying, you're descending through the clouds. Uh, Zartok, you're descending, I don't know, is Zartok still flying? I, uh, he, I think it would probably be Lumpen's turn right now, I okay. guess. So Lumpen is descending the ship down through the clouds toward the ground after uh, moving through space around the planet. And you're all flying along at full speed, descending through the clouds as usual, when suddenly there is a loud thwack and something hits the ship. And you can all feel it shudder. And Gerlos comes running below deck and runs into the bridge and says, <laughs> "Well, you really, uh, you really hit that rope hard. That was cool." And Anzno rolls her eyes and, si- and says, "Yes, there, there was a rope just hanging from the sky that came out of nowhere, and we ran right into it. It doesn't seem to have hurt the ship." Lumpen is just sitting there. Oh well, should I keep going? What should I do? And the three NPCs stand there, <laughs> wondering what they should do. <laughs> is there Does a anyone- not NPC anywhere? <laughs> Uh, well, I, I assumed you were you were sleeping. I'm on the deck sleeping. How close is, is that okay, to the yeah, bridge? Okay, yeah. So Astor, you hear this loud thwack, okay. and you're jolted awake. And I guess Astor and Sylphonia, you see a rope just dangling from the sky slide over the ship. Huh? And it just re- recedes into the distance. And I heard them talking. Well, I've never seen something like that before. Uh, neither have I. I don't know if this is normal for space. Would the thwack be enough to wake someone who is sleeping in the captain's quarters? It very well could be if you want it to be, sure. If you want it to be enough to wake you up. I'll roll. I'm, I'm near Lumpen, too? You're on the, on the deck okay. with Sophonia. Okay. Lumpen's on the bridge sitting in the in the spell jamming helm. Okay. I rolled a three, and I was going to go with uh, under ten is no, so no. She's sleeping heavily. Okay, so Tara... Rolls over. I'm going to get up and walk towards Lumpen if he's flying okay, the so ship. You walk into the bridge and Lumpen says, Oh, hey, Aster. I hit something flying in the air. Yeah, yeah, I heard that. What is A giant rope from the sky? Yeah, is that I guess normal? So. I, I don't think so. Should uh, I go back or do you want me to keep going? I, I, hmm. I don't want to poke the bear, but there's a giant rope falling from the sky. I feel like we should investigate. But I feel like we need to talk to the captain. Well, I'll just stop then, and you can go talk to Tara. How's uh, that? Yeah, I didn't know we could stop in the air. Sure. All right. I can hover, and I can go straight. Period. Man, you're really good at this. <laughs> hover and straight. I can also turn, but I really like I really like straight. <laughs> <laughs> That's good, Lumpet. I'm going to go find uh, our Captain Tara. Okay, I'll hover. Thank you. You know, Gerlos ends not keep your eyes out. All right, Gerlos walks back up to the deck, uh, and Anzna says, I'll uh, I'll keep an eye on Gerlos and make sure he doesn't climb any ropes or anything. Yeah, I, I mean, stay near the rope. Maybe something's going to happen. And yeah, I keep Gerlos. I think we've already from... gone way past it, but we could turn around and go back. Oh, oh, you got it. I go down. Um. Okay. So you find the uh, knock on Tara's door. As mm-hmm. as Aster's knocking, Coral comes out of the crew quarters, and uh, the hair that she and Tara worked very hard to fix the day before, <laughs> uh, it it's kind of half of it is oiled down, and the other half is just standing up again. <sighs> what's, what's going What's going on? I heard a thing. Uh, the mirror says, "Ah, oh, it's just it's just you. Oh, Ooh. yes, I, uh, you have." 
Coral, there's something. You have a little. She bed, she reaches up bedhead. to touch her. Oh, Tara, I work so hard. Ah, uh, sorry. What was that sound? <laughs> um, a rope. A rope. We hit a rope in space. Okay, that's yeah. Sure. I I have no idea. I thought maybe we could investigate, but you know, I like to see what everybody thinks. I'm gonna ask Tara. Dunk, 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 dunk. Not loud enough for her to hear. Sure, Tara. There's a knock on your door. Uh, there's some groans and grumbles and a sound of um, feet, and then uh, Tara opens the door and goes, "What?" Um. We hit something, Cap. El Capitan. What? what? We s- oh, sorry. We, we... Okay, Tara's, like, rushing to get some, like, uh, like proper armor on. We hit what? We hit a rope. In the middle of nowhere. Just, just a rope dangling in the middle of nowhere. Asser, did the rope damage our ship? <laughs> no. Well, next time we hit something, if it's just, like, a... Like a little, you know, you know. But Captain, it's hanging from like a like nothing. an acorn falling on your on your boat. You know, I just eh, oh, you know, we, it made me panic for a minute. Um, so it's a rope hanging from. You, did anyone like pull on it or something? The sky. No, we're just watching it. We don't want to. I well, we we passed it, so we, we would need to turn around if we wanted to investigate this rope. I just thought we would pr- approach approach this conversation. Maybe it's something worth approaching. It's a rope leading up higher. Higher than the God Peak, maybe. Maybe it's something we should take a look at. Do you think it's like like Raphael's or something? Like, did it come from the, <laughs> from the tower? Or? I don't know. I just wanted to mention it. Maybe it's something Zartok would be interested in. You know, how those learned types really like to... Absorb all kinds of information. Uh, uh, Coral heads to the upstairs part. Okay, she has the deck. Yeah, sure. Go, go go ask Zartok if he cares about the rope hanging from the sky. Sure, sure. I'll go to Zartok, knock on his door. All right, you go to the cabin where all the beds are, or the other beds are, and uh, you don't need to knock. I mean, it's just a common room. So. I open it. All right. And Zartok is, I assume, a sleeping soundly. I cast Mage Hand, and I go over to him, and I ruffle his head with the hand. <laughs> shh, shh, shh. Okay. Shh. Uh, I'm sure that's going to go over great with Zartok. <laughs> Zartok can't sleep anyway because gas and snore so loud. Oh, so he sees the hand approaching. His head. <laughs> <laughs> this is a weird prank to pull, mate. What do you want? <laughs> Uh, no prank. Sorry, I thought it would be funny to wake you up with magic. Anyway, you know, we, we, we hit a rope floating in the sky. We're, we passed it now, but I was, I thought maybe you should know, maybe you would want to investigate this giant floating rope. Uh, where are we? Are we, are we close to the ground? No. Yeah, sure. Let's take a look. Nice. All right, let's go. I'm going to. You know, walk my way up. All right. So you climb up to the deck. Tara's up in her armor, and she's discussing with Lumpen how he ran straight into a rope. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, yeah, Lumpen says, well, I was going straight toward the mountains. Yeah, but, like, and are you looking out, you know, at the at what's yes. in front of you? Yes, of course. But it's dark, and I didn't expect to see a rope. It hit the ship. I'm sorry. Do you have, do you not have, like, dark vision? Uh, I don't know if he has dark vision. Let's see. That's a good question. Even if he has dark vision, it doesn't let him see perfectly in darkness. Yeah, I'm just saying he might be a bad night flyer choice. <laughs> what what is what is the ship's vision? Because that's what you have, right? Like, how's that work? Right. I think it's just your normal vision, but you have you, you the ability to see oh, around the, the ship. ship. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, didn't mean to ask the hard questions. He's a talking rag. Of course he can see in the dark. <laughs> All right, hold on. I have pulled up Imagine Magazine number 19 from October 
where the rag golem first appeared. And I am looking to see if rag golems have any information listed about dark vision or infravision or whatever they used back. Rag golem. No, I don't see anything about dark vision. Oh, Lumpin, you're so you're so magical. I just kind of assumed you could see in the dark, you know, like like all the other guys can. And maybe you're just not like our best night pilot. Maybe you're more of a daytime pilot. Okay. Do you want me to go backward and back up to where the rope is? Um, uh, I assume it's our talk is now here, right? Oh, he's awake. He's looking for the rope, and now, uh, and then now, Aster and Zartok, there's no rope there, and so now they're probably gonna have to come back down. Yeah, you've already gone past it. You're you're flying through the atmosphere at sixty miles an hour. Well, we're hovering. Well, we're right? hovering. We're hovering. But when you hit the rope, you're going at sixty miles per hour, oh. and it would quickly recede behind you. So. No, I know, but we stopped right now. We're stopped, right? Right now, you're stopped. But okay. we're still That's not right. near the rope. We still have. But you're still back. not near the rope because you'd have to back up to get back to where it is. I thought we were closer, guys. Yeah, I don't see anything up here, Aster. I heard it, but I don't see anything. I heard it, and I trust Lumpin and Enzna and <clears throat> Gerlos. <laughs> uh, I'm, uh, Lumpin, I'm not, uh, you know, Aster went to go see if Zartog wants to inspect the rope that's floating in the sky, and it seems like he might because, you know, it's a rope that's floating in the sky. But, uh, you know, uh, do you think you could get back to the rope? Yeah, uh, I can go straight backward. You're, just, you're not going to turn the ship? You're just going to go, like, in reverse? <laughs> straight lines. Do you want me to turn the ship? You know, I think that if you think you could reverse in a straight line better than you can turn the ship, then I think that you should do that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yep, he manages it. He just backs straight up. Nah, he rolled for he it. It's it again. <laughs> <laughs> so he backs straight up, and eventually you can see coming toward the ship is just a rope hanging from midair. You don't see anything particular for it to be tied to. It just yeah. suddenly stops. It's about 55 feet long. It appears to simply dangle from nothing. This is the craziest example of rope trip. And we see the the, the full end of it? Yep, you can see both ends of it. I, I would like to do an arcana check, if I may. Okay, make an arcana check. That is a uh, unnatural 20. Nice. All right. So you're pretty sure that this is a spell called rope trick. Oh, it's rope trick. I've seen this before. That's cool. It's weird that it's here, but that's it's 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 a rope trick spell. That's weird. In the middle of the sky? Should we pull on it? I mean, you- uh, somebody should climb it cuz uh there's a there's a space up there. There's I I know about rope trick, right? Sure, yeah. There's a space, an extra dimensional space up at the top of it that someone could climb into. Yeah, there's a space up there you can climb up into it. There might be stuff. Oh, there might be bad things too, but there might be stuff. It's not a big space, I think. That's right. Huh. Sure. I think that's a good idea. Okay, so who's going to climb the rope? I would suggest uh, Tara. <laughs> <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> well, you got the upper, you got Tara's the... Song. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Should yeah. climb the rope. Uh, All right. Make a DC5 athletics check. <laughs> Even I couldn't fail this. <laughs> As a 12 plus 9, I got 21. All right. So <laughs> she, Tara easily ascends the rope. She does uh, it in two leaps. <laughs> yeah. So she just easily climbs up this rope as though it were nothing. And you climb into a strange space. You enter this 15 by 15 foot area. The walls, floor, and ceiling are a strange, indistinct, white, puffy material. You can see the rope and the ship below through an opening about three feet by five feet. Although you couldn't see that opening from below, you just climbed up the rope and then suddenly as your head went up to the top where the top of the rope is, suddenly it went into this space. Also in this space are two corpses. Awkward. Seemingly identical, lying right next to each other. And each appears to be a human wizard wearing colorful robes. Oh. Uh, hmm. can I go inspect them? Sure. You want to climb up into the space? Sure, yeah. Okay, you climb up into the space. Oh, wait, hold on. Let me kind of shout down first. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, Tara shouts down. I see two dead bodies. Oh, okay. 
Can you tell what killed him? Like it wasn't gas or anything? I, I don't know if gas or, you know, poison or something can be up in that space, but... I have an idea. Hold on, I'll go see what killed him. And then she climbs in. <laughs> 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 okay, uh, so you see these two bodies here. Um, make... Um, make an investigation check. This is not going to be good. Hold on. And then make a medicine check. Okay, so I got a, uh, because of my minus two, it's a, it's a five. <laughs> okay. And then my medicine check oof, is a ten. Okay. The only thing you can determine from this inspection that you've just done is that this person wasn't killed by any injuries. That is, they weren't stabbed or beaten or anything like that you find uh looking around the area looking around them in this search they, these bodies look identical so you don't bother to really feel over both of them you just grab one and start poking around you find a wand that must have been a spell focus you find an empty water skin a bag with three gold coins a quill pin an empty inkwell and a round pale green prism and the remains of a spell book. As soon as uh, Coral saw Tara disappear into the uh, space, uh, she's going to follow her up there. Do I need to roll as well? Oh, you can roll. I mean, if it's so low, you, it would probably be a, unlikely you would fail. It's a 12. Okay, yeah. So you pretty easily climb up there, climb into the space. You can see Tara is searching this body, and there's another identical body next to it, and she's picked out a few items that she's found. Oh, okay, I was I was worried you were up here dying or something, so I'm, I'm glad you're not. Like, it's not poison. It seems like it's not poison or nothing. No, no, it doesn't seem to be poison. I, it's kind of weird that the bodies look the same. Uh, I don't... I know I've seen you or Zartok, like, split. Yeah, I think Zartok, he, he split himself, but I feel like he just disappears when it's the wrong him. So I'm very confused by I, this. Yeah, I don't think those things usually stick around. Yeah. Coral, make an investigation check. Uh, thir- uh, 18. 18. Yeah, uh, a very quick inspection reveals that one of these people lying on the ground is a mirror image. Interesting. And it's just staying right there. Yeah, yeah, that's... In the exact same pose as the actual body. Wow, Tara, that's wild. This is, it's that same, you, you know, Zartok does that spell. Uh, I, I think it's uh, mirror, mirror something or other. And uh, this, it's that's what that is. Can I poke the one that is the mirror image? Like, can I touch it or does my hand just go through it? Your hand just goes through it, unless you want to attack it. No, no, I'm just going to, I mean, unless you consider a poke an attack. It's just a poke. No. Uh, can I do a medicine check on the? Sure, make a medicine check. Okay, that went off the table. Oh, that's not going to do it. Uh, that's a six. No, you agree with Tara's diagnosis that this person didn't die from injuries, but you're not sure what they died of. Okay. You see the same things that she's set out. You see an empty water skin, a bag with some gold coins, a quill pen, an empty inkwell, a round pale green prism, and the remains of a spell book. Hey, uh, Zartok, do you want to go up there? Uh, you, no, you know, I don't want, yeah. Everything's good. Okay, I'm going to go up there. You take care of the down <laughs> here. And then I just start climbing. All right, make a, an easy athletics check. Zartok oh. doesn't want to embarrass himself climbing up a rope. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody watching. Uh, nine. Nine. Yeah, so Almost you are able to fairly easily climb the rope. And you see Coral and Tara looking around this space. There's not much in here. Hey, guys, what'd you find? Like I said, just two dead bodies. Well, it's a dead body oh. and, a, and a, our, our, uh, a magical second self. Uh, it's, mirror, it's a mirror spell. I, mirror I, image? See, I poke it again and my hand just goes through it. Yeah, yeah, mirror image, that's what it's called. Oh. Tara punches it. You punch it? Yeah. All right, it disappears. And now there's only the body. Yeah, see, that's how mirror image works. Wow, Okay. Uh, is that guy stabbed to death? What? How did he die? <laughs> uh, just is died. Is it a guy? I can't. I mean, maybe there was some gas up here at some point, but uh, uh, huh. he doesn't I walk... have any injuries. Okay. I walk up. How does the corpse look? 
Uh, well, make a medicine check. <laughs> Roll better than both of us. <laughs> not bad. 19 plus 4. Yeah, that's, wow. yeah, that's not All bad. Right. So, Aster, you look at the desiccated state of this corpse, the condition of the body. Uh, you look at the information you have lying around you, and you conclude that this person starved to death. Got you. Well, I was thinking more, like, it looks like it's been a while, like he looks, like, dried out. And, yes. Okay. Well, it looks, I have an idea of what happened here. <clears throat> Let me put on my investigator hat. I think he uh, died from starvation. He might have been in some kind of scuffle. Maybe he was also on a spell jammer. I don't see how else he could get up here. Maybe to try to escape, he used this rope and didn't realize there was nowhere for him to go after he went up here and then ran out of resources. And then I do the gesture of cutting my throat. Yeah. I mean, that makes sense, but the that mirror, mirror image doesn't last super long, and rope trick doesn't last very long, so if he had time to starve to death, the spells should have both gone away. This is true, and his body has been here for quite a while. Maybe this area has some kind of magical infusion. I have no idea what I'm talking about. Uh, can I look at the prism? Yeah, you look at this prism. It's a uh, green prism. Uh, can I do an arcana check on it, uh, thinking that maybe this is the reason that the spells have stuck around for as long as they have? You can do an arcana check. It won't tell you a lot about no, it, but, but it might tell you something. Yeah. Nope, it's not going to tell me much, because that's an eight. No. Do you, do you think it's this this object? I don't know. It might be. We should take it with us. And the spell book. Uh, Zartok might be able to use something out of it. I don't see anything else worthwhile in here. What about you? Tara, Aster. Yeah, no, I, I, I'm ready to get out of here. It's yeah, I weird. trust you guys. Okay, well, you pick up the spell book, Coral, I guess? Yes, I made the All comment, right. so sure. You notice it is suspiciously light. In fact, as soon as you pick it up, you see that it really only has one page left in it. Oh, okay. Okay. You ripped out all the pages? Ate them, maybe? <laughs> yeah, it looks like all the other pages have been ripped out. Oh, that's a dark thought. Uh, that's the spell. <laughs> I don't know if we can read it. It's a wizard well, you spell. Can, you want to? Do you want to take a look, or do you want to just hope that Zartok can read it, or what do you want to well, do? Yeah, I'm... I was just going to take it and give it to Zartok. It's no good to yeah. me. Okay. All right. You climb down. Oh, I took the prism your, as well. Take the prism as well. Anything else? Yeah, sure. The ink, the paper, you know. Okay. Yeah, Zartok could use all those things. All right. You take the three gold coins, the quill pen, the ink well, and the, the green prism, and the remains of the spell book. Okay, and you climb back down. Zartok, they bring you all this stuff. They it was weird up there, Zartok. Like, there was a rope trick spell that shouldn't still be around, and a mirror image spell that shouldn't still be around, and uh, this is a dead body that starved to death, but it shouldn't have had time to starve to death with those spells still in a a active. I, I, I don't know, but here's the stuff. Cool. So that's a, I rolled a 28 Arcana mic to know why spells are lasting so long and what this green thing is. If you want multiple rolls, let me know. Well, you're pretty sure the green thing is something magical and you're sure that there's something weird going on with the spells. But in order to figure out exactly what the green thing is, you would need to cast Identify. Yeah, that's all I can tell you for now. Okay, he'll, he'll cast Identify and I'll mark off a pearl. Okay. This is a pale green prism known as an Ayun Stone of Mastery. An Ayun Stone of Mastery. And its effect is it gives a plus one to your proficiency bonus. That, that's probably not why the spells are sticking around then. Right. Nope, it shouldn't have anything to do with that. Hmm. And then there's also the spell book. What's in, what's it, what's it got? What's in this? So you open it up. There are no spells left in it. All there is is a message scrawled across the paper that is on the inside covers. It says, I am Staleflorn, student of Bunda. Cast no spells in this space. Strange and deadly things may happen. I cannot end my spells. No one answers my notes. If you find this, tell Bunda I tried to hide from the Illithids, but was trapped here. I do not know what happened to the crew. Hmm, interesting. Do we, we haven't met a... A Bunda. It's probably long, no. long dead. Hmm. Don't cast any spells; they last forever. 
Huh. What's the what's the GPS coordinates? Let's make a <laughs> let's make a, a mark of this. I mean, could someone roll an intelligence? How can we abuse this? I mean, combining it with your Arcana check from before, I'll tell you that this does seem to be an area of some kind of wild magic or something that is causing these spells to last an unusually long time. You're not sure how long they'll last, but they seem to have lasted at least for years, you would guess. How common are illithids in this world? Uncommon. Okay. Like, would Coral know what they are? Oh, roll a history check. We don't know what those are. I mean, are. I don't know well, I don't. if Zartok has even mentioned them, but, like, I don't know if that he was speaking about, about it aloud. That's not great. Twelve. Mm, you've probably heard something about them, but you don't know much about them. Now, okay. Tara and Aster, and I think Zartok even, have, have seen an illithid. Hmm? Fortunately. Also known as a mind flayer. Is it, is it the one that, that we saw when we were down there in the... Uh... In the wizard complex, yes. <laughs> um, did we ever talk about those, what they were? Did Zartok ever explain that to me and Tara? I don't know. Can't remember that far <laughs> Okay. Um, I feel like maybe um, what's his face would have. I'm sure, someone Gil? did because I know we mentioned yeah, Gil. That's it. Yep. Because we we knew that like that's what uh, the big worm guy was. It was the right. elephant, yeah. and that and he, yeah, Tara was like almost murdered by an elephant, and so right. so she she does not like that. She she's glad she left there. Mm, I'm wondering Even though there's if... no elephant there. Wondering if when you cast a spell in the space, if this if the page of the spell was memorized from is destroyed or something. It could be. It could also be. I don't know who mentioned this, but hmm. they could have eaten the pages to try to stay alive. Well, they they said that uh, they were writing notes too, so maybe they were using their spell book as uh, notes and throwing them out the opening. Oh, and hope someone would find it. Maybe that's a much nicer thought. But maybe also morbid, because no one found them. So uh, this uh, this stone stone's pretty nice. And who's going to take this? I'm assuming that would be a great thing for for anybody. Yeah. I mean, you're the you're the magic man, Zatok. Yeah, I think this is useful to anyone. Yeah, proficiency is literally anyone. It would really boost whatever it is that bards have. What is it that bards have? Bardic something. Inspiration. Whatever it is. No, no, their no. half their proficiency gets added to everything. Oh. So then it would oh, add yeah. to that. You know what I mean? I assume it requires attunement. Oh, you know what? I, I don't, don't think remember. my last ion stone did. Mine does. I don't know. I don't know this item. I won't take it if somebody else wants it, but if nobody wants it, I'll take it. Well, I don't mind here's the either question. way. Does it require attunement? It does require attunement. I do All not right, want so, it. Yeah, who's willing to attune to it? I physically cannot anymore. So maybe, it's, maybe it's time to reward some of your uh, underlings with some magical wealth. Oh, maybe maybe ends in our gallows, or maybe even lumpen, or maybe Papa Gaston or or Mama Sass might benefit from it. Either of them could use a proficiency bonus. I vote for lumpen, but whatever. Uh, yeah, Mama Sass is set up on uh, a two items, so. What about yeah, Papa Gaston? Lumpen, he might want this. I don't think Lumpen has any. Um, and yeah, Gerlos is uh, real interested. Yeah, I, I need a cool stone. That'd be cool. <laughs> oh, no, he would lose it. It, uh, it doesn't match my eyes, but uh, still, it <laughs> looks pretty cool. Like, what do I do with it? Oh, if it's like mine, you just kind of, you, you got to spend some time with it and get used to it. And then uh -huh. it just kind of floats around your head like mine does. Oh, cool. But do you, uh, and I, like hit it away and stuff, and like it comes back? I don't know. Wouldn't I've never help? tried. Wouldn't it help Lumpen with flying? Uh, yeah, it would actually. I think it'd be best to give to Lumpen then because all uh, Garlos does is like help load something, and that's not a check. Oh man, <laughs> uh -oh. you know, well, Garlos, uh, you know, we might need it for our friend Lumpen just so that we can fly the ship more appropriately. Yeah, I guess. I don't want to crash. Hey, uh, hey, yeah. Garlos, I, yeah. I got a thing I can give you if you want it. <clears throat> yeah? It's a charm. Uh-huh. It lets you, lets you talk to and tell plants stuff to do. 
It's called Charm Ooh. Plant Command. You can have that if you want. I'm not using Ooh. it. Awesome. That'd be cool. Like, can I tell him to like uh, brush my teeth? I mean, <laughs> you can try. They won't necessarily do it, but you you can try to do it. Try to tell him to do it. <laughs> that sounds really cool. All right, yeah. Let me have that thing. Okay, here you go. Thanks. Wow. I remember that. Okay, Mike. let's go find some plants. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> please, please remember to do that. Wow, thanks, Coral. Oh, you're welcome. All right, now Lumpen has a cool item. Yeah, Lumpen has an Iune Stone. It's a very oh, nice please, item. Let me get Lumpen's reaction. You head down below the deck to the bridge, and you see Lumpen sitting there in the, in the chair looking content, just the ship parked below the rope. He's just sitting there. What'd you find? Oh, well, we... We have something that we want to give you, Lumpen. Oh, okay. Am I in trouble? No, it's a gift. Oh, wow. Thanks. It's going to help you be better at flying the ship. Oh, great. What is it? Uh, it's this. And uh, Tara hands him a little, little pale green glass prism. It's, a, it's an Iune stone like the one Coral has. But like not exactly like the one Coral has because this one... Makes you, like, a little better at some things that you already know how to do. Wow. Okay. I'll just hold on to it then. Yeah. Is well, that what I do? You, you're going to sp- some, spend some time with it, and uh, you get to know it, and it gets to know you, and then uh, and does this one float above your head, or you just hold it in your robes? I don't know. Mine floated above my head. I don't remember. Every own stone I'm familiar with floats around your head. Yeah. Okay. It, like, it, like, orbits your head. Then it's, it's going to, like, orbit your head. And it, you look cool. Wow, that's so weird. Okay. All right, well, I'll think about it after I stop flying. Okay, cool. Well, yeah. Thanks. You're welcome. You're a great captain. <laughs> You're a great lumpin. <laughs> oh, thank you. All right, do I go straight again now? Yes. Um. Well, hold on. Yes, yes, because you only backed up, so you don't have to turn around. Just go straight again. Yeah. All right, to the God's Peak we go. Okay. Lumpen resumes traveling straight, and you continue descending, leaving the rope floating in the sky behind you. So if you had cast Identify in that space, does the Identify last forever? What does that mean? <laughs> That's... You would have had to try that to see what would happen. Too dangerous hmm. not trying it. Glad Zartok okay. didn't climb up there. <laughs> yep. Zartok oh. would have fallen. <laughs> Coral, you did climb up there, didn't you? Coral, when you climb up there... You, I forgot to mention this. You started developing a slight headache, and you've climbed back down, and as you're climbing back down, the headache continued to get a little worse and then started getting better, and now it seems to have gone away. Okay. Did that happen to, to Aster, too? Is it like uh, an- Aster, to a lesser extent. Okay. But yes, you have a slight pain in your head. It's not clear what's causing it, but as you descend down the rope again, it starts to go away and uh, it fades. And Tara, Tara you don't feel nothing at all. <laughs> you feel nothing whatsoever. Because it was so slight, I'm going to, you know, logic it as maybe it was the altitude. Oh, yeah. I'm just <laughs> not sure. going to mention it or anything. It's, it's gone. It's fine. Okay. Bird's a little chilly up there. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So you continue to descend toward the mountain range east of Ronkthrak. Most of the mountains are capped with snow, but as you get closer, you can see fortifications built into the mountains, sometimes protruding from the snow. The mountains rise higher as you continue east, and in the distance, you can see one that is clearly higher than the others. Its peak is shrouded by a thick bank of clouds that stubbornly floats in place, swirling and twisting slowly while other clouds fly by. What would you like to do? Uh, on the way there, Coral's going to try to retame her hair. Okay. Is this the next day now? Uh, yeah, actually, it is the next day. Yeah. Yeah, so this is the next day. That morning, you're descending, and you can see the sun coming up to the east over these mountains, and this one mountain is clearly higher than the others. So Coral's going to attempt to dress her hair again. Anyone else want to do anything? I'm going to put on my nice early outfit. All right, you put on your frilly shirt. Nobody else is doing anything. Do you want Lumpen to continue flying in that direction? How is Lumpen at landing? Okay. Not as good as Zartok. <laughs> Mike, how big are the, the, so the things that the, the far-up one gave us to, like, 
plant all around the universe yep. the solar system mm-hmm. how big are they like are they inconspicuously like, yeah they're like little jars think of like, like little uh, mason jars oh, that okay. size like this like mm-hmm. yeah exactly okay. oh i do want to talk about star talk will take one okay but and Zartok not let anyone one. know Ugh. okay okay Zartok takes one. Hera's going to uh, find Zartok at some point, and uh, as they near the gods, he can tell him to go take over flying because um, Lum is really good at going straight, but when we go into a mountain, we don't want to go straight into it. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah, that, that's, right, small. Yeah. that's why you're the boss. Yep. Yeah, Lumpen says, I have to go learn how to make my stone float. Yeah. Okay, so he's going to head off and just off to the side of the spell jamming helm and... Look at his little green prism for a while. Well, we're getting to the peak. We're going to be talking to some very, you know, powerful individuals. I was just wondering, you know, we had that discussion with <clears throat> the far off one. Well, what is everybody's thoughts? Are we just going to talk and see where it goes? I just, I know Zartok, you, you, you... Yeah, something going on with with her. I just, I feel very uneasy about her. I mean, the gods could very well be jerks. I don't know if that necessarily means enacting this plan. Just putting it out there. It's precisely There's... what we're going to do. We're going to talk and see how it goes. Because so far, that's the only solution we have other than uh, the other solution of the... Uh, army of undead who will kill all magic users and I feel like of the two options we have that's the better one maybe they'll present us with a different one I hope so uh-huh, I yeah. trust Seafoam Wander no offense much more than the far off one yeah but, okay. but if she doesn't have any solutions then I don't have anything to trust her with mm. okay you're the captain I really would like to talk to the healer you know because Paxton liked him so much that's true. It's very true. As your ship grows nearer to this enormous mountain, you begin to see more of its features. There are ruined structures on its sides. Flat platforms support a few stone columns, which probably supported now-collapsed roofs. There are also other piles of rubble scattered across the side of the mountain. Zartok, make an arcana check, or anyone can attempt an investigation check. Okay. I'll do an... You said Arcana or Investigation? Oops. I didn't Arcana mean or Investigation? I, uh, I did an Investigation. I rolled a two and I have a minus two, so I effectively have a zero. <laughs> All right. Tara does not even notice the rubble on the mountain. Uh, Twelve. <laughs> Twelve, okay. I rolled bad. Not eight. Twenty-eight. Uh, Twenty-eight for Zartok, and what did Aster get? <laughs> An eight. An eight. All right, so Zartok, maybe this is for the best. Zartok, you realize, and no one else does, as you're flying toward this mountain, that a lot of what this stuff on the side of the mountain appears to be is the remains of spell jammers or other flying ships. Mm. Oh my god. Really glad I changed the pilot. Swell. Uh, you know. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, I like a good foreshadowing. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, there are no obvious signs of threats, but of course, you don't know what lurks inside that cloud. All right, so you're continuing to approach this cloud at the top of this mountain. Is there anything else you want to do? Zartak, you don't say anything, right, about that? He doesn't feel the need to get anyone all worried about it. Yeah, so all I do is, as we're approaching this mountain, is close my eyes and say, please help us, Ephraim Wanderer. Please. All right. Aster prays. Aster, you receive, you feel reassurance. Okay. You feel a sense that you're going the right way. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, you continue floating forward, and as you near the cloud, it suddenly rushes outward and envelops your ship. Oh. You have a strange sinking feeling in the pit of your stomach, and you feel briefly dizzy. This passes quickly, but you see nothing new outside, just more clouds. Though the light looks different. Does it look slightly brighter and warmer, maybe? Hmm. Suddenly, those clouds part, and Corellan's needle is floating toward a circular platform ringed by white marble columns. Several small birds fly by the windows of the ship, chirping happily. 
And beyond the circular platform, you can see an enormous wall of white stone stretching up and down until it passes into impenetrable clouds. A single figure wearing a white tunic stands on the round platform looking up at you. It's hard to see detail from this distance, but it appears he has a shiny helmet on his head and he's leaning on a staff and he might be waving you forward, Zartok. And that's where we'll stop. Nice. Cool. We're here. We're here. I don't, I mean, I could ask Tara, I don't know what her love life is like. And Jessica seems, oops, (laughs) scratch that. (laughs) I meant meant Carl. Oh, you know what? I could ask Who is this Jessica? She is heartless as she seems. Tell me more about her. (laughs) Yes. I did. Uh, No. uh. One moment. I always depend on the kindness of strangers. Okay. This is a warm up. That's all about my warm up. I got to switch cut to southern accents, so I got to get into the right mindset. <laughs> Sorry, I thought it was part of the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> like, Wait, what? what a weird thing to say. <laughs> That's odd. That doesn't make any sense. But okay. She just plays this character off a soundboard. She's got like six. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. I'm sorry. So the we airport guy, the airport guy yes, with the little two, two landing things. Yeah. Yeah. Two little light sticks. I feel like the most relieved person is Mike. Like, finally, they made it. <laughs> They're doing, no, they, we're, they're doing we're, something. We were so close to having a war. <laughs> um, do do we get any experience for that random encounter? Or no? Not yeah, I'll that? give you a little bit ex- of experience here. Hang on. <laughs> I'm sorry for being a XP greedy person. But I'm so close. Oh, if you're close, I understand. That makes sense. I'm sure it won't be enough, but still. We'll just have to kill God. That'll do it, yeah. for sure. We just had to kill one of the gods. <laughs> I'm sure it'll be easy. We walk in there. Look at all this experience. <laughs> <laughs> Become the murder hobos we were destined to be. Right. This is so right. much experience. <laughs> I mean, like, I finally reached the level of bard that I was imagining in my head. So it would be rogue from now, but I don't think it's going to be a very long campaign after this. I have no idea. I don't even, I'm not even sure there's going to be a big fight at the end. I, it yeah, depends it on how things go, I suppose. I don't, even, I don't know. You know. I have no idea how what's going to happen. You know what? Neither do I. I'm going to give everybody 800 experience points. Oh, wow. Okay. 